Good morning, Restore Community Church. It is my pleasure to welcome you in on this Palm Sunday in the year 2024. How time seems to be flying. Uh, for those of you that may not know, my name is Dustin Pruitt and I lead the Restore Winchmore Hill location of the Restore family of churches. Uh, and here we are at Palm Sunday. Uh, I'm not going to be before you long. Um, I you know, speaking into the future, but we just had a, a, a Restore Family Day where all the locations met up together at Totteridge Road Baptist Church. And I am speaking in faith here, but I know it was a grand time uh, that there's a reason why Bjorn was coming out here, that he prayerfully answered yes when he uh, was asked to come out. And he certainly is going to be, bring a blessing of God with him, a, a revelation for us and where we are in this year of activation. Um, so please, I hope every one of you turned out for it if you could. And if you couldn't, uh, maybe you're at Loughton this morning, listening in person, whatever it may be. Um, but here we are at Palm Sunday. It's the, the beginning of Holy Week, if you will. And if I can give some context, uh, I am American. Uh, I'm from the great state of Texas. Um, and for me in my history and a lot of Protestant church history, Holy Week doesn't really have a lot of meaning. Uh, Palm Sunday doesn't really have a lot of Good Friday isn't really something we celebrate. We don't get a day off of work. Um, we, we don't have a service for the most part. Some churches do, but just as often they don't. Um, so here we are at Palm Sunday, um, and I'm reading through the text. I'm reading through the Bible of Jesus and his journey to get here. And, and we're in the midst of talking about the Holy Spirit. We just closed out the, the series of the Spirit Speaks, but it's still speaking to me today. And I just notice all the times where the Bible talks about the Spirit being on Jesus. I'm thinking here in Luke chapter 4, it says a couple times, uh, starting in verse 1, it says, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Every step, he's being led by the Spirit. Later on in verse 14, it says, Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit. Every step that he took, every breath he took, basically, was steeped in the Holy Spirit. That God here on earth, our Emmanuel, God here on earth, was led by the Holy Spirit. So who are we? You know, and that, and this, once again, I, I speak to myself. Sometimes when I'm, when I'm preaching in person, I always think I should put a mirror on the front row seat. Because sometimes I'm preaching to myself here. So who am I to think that I've got this all figured out? That even Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit in all that he did. And I think this, he, it led him ultimately to the cross, to this Palm Sunday. Here we are, his triumphant entry, as we call, uh, into the city of Jerusalem. And the story goes, he rides in on a donkey. People laid palm fronds. Down on the pathway, they waved palm fronds at him. That's where we get palm crosses from uh, today in a lot of celebrations. Um, Lent, which happened, uh, you know, nearly 40 days ago. Uh, it's traditional that you take those same palms from the year before. You burn them and the ashes from that is what they'll draw across on someone's head. Uh, in my recollection in America, Methodists do that and the Catholics do that. Um, but many more do as well here. Um, and so this triumphant entry, it was led fully by the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit was leading Jesus in this. And ultimately, is that same Spirit that revealed this knowledge to the prophets centuries ago that this would happen, that he would come in and he would ride on a donkey, which to give some historical context that the Jews in that day and age were under occupation, that they, they, were, they weren't ruling themselves, and they didn't like that. I mean, who would, right? Uh, they were ruled by conquering force, and they were imagining their Messiah is going to come in and look like a warrior, 
fierce and strong, a crown built on his head, coming in on a, a war horse to lead their people back to victory through warfare. And Jesus rides in on a donkey, kind of fully disrupting this imagery that they had. Instead of coming in with, with strength and pride, Jesus comes in with strength and humility. And there's something somewhat special there that I pick up. And for me, that he rides in on a donkey, um, at, at least back in America, uh, farmers will often introduce donkeys to herds like herd of cattle or herds of horses because they are feisty animals. They, will, they are fiercely protective. And so when coyotes will come in, I, I'm from Texas now, we got coyotes. Uh, coyotes will come in to sweep away the young or the sick, uh, the foals and horses and the lambs. And donkeys will fiercely protect the herd. They will immediately attack the coyote. They'll, they'll grab them. They'll thrash them around in their mouth and they will protect. And so when I see Jesus here walking in, well, not walking in, riding in on a donkey, I think of all that Jesus did, that he came here to rescue his people, to reconcile the lost, to, to defeat the enemy who had been feasting on his people, to free them from their bondage of sin. And I just think it's such wonderful, wonderful imagery, that humility that Jesus comes in, that it's not a war horse. It's not with a sword in hand, a crown on head, giving edict that I am the, the king born that's been foretold. That he came as a king to serve and to come with humility and ultimately led by the Spirit. And that humility, if I can highlight it, in Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 8, it says, In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, so this, this guy's God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Uh, a lot of times I've been, I've said to people that Christians, sometimes we use God as a bludgeon that we try to beat them over the head with God. of No, you should be doing this. This is right. This is wrong. Well, when Jesus came, and he, well, I, let me not get too far ahead. To continue on, it said, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. So Jesus didn't come to wag the finger. Jesus didn't come to whack them over the head. He came to serve. He came to be humbled. He rode in on a donkey to serve the need of the people, which was death. He needed to die for our sin when he didn't have to that's the glory of it he didn't have to do it but he did I think that's so amazing that anytime I feel myself wanting needing to be humbled I think about it didn't have to be this way there was a system in place and humanity broke it and it could have just kept going but Jesus God, the creator, loved us so much that he died in our place. That he humbled himself to serve. That's so amazing to me. And, and while this Palm Sunday, it marks the beginning of this Holy Week, it, it, it kind of underlines Christ's role as the servant coming in in humility, it is a testament of the Spirit's role in triumph. As Jesus, he rode into Jerusalem, he did not do so as the conquering king. He did it as a servant, as a herald of God coming in with 
peace and restoration and protection, not warfare, not death and destruction, but life and life it's all in, in all its fullness. In Romans 8, verse 11, it says, And if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of the Spirit who lives in you. It's that love, that Spirit that drove Jesus here, that Spirit that raised Christ from the dead. It's in us. And if we can act like Christ, have that mindset of Christ, that not, we're not here to lord our righteousness over others. We're here to just be servants. And that we can embody the fruit of the Spirit, that if we let that Spirit guide and lead us and fill us to go backwards a week in Galatians 5, verses 22 to 23, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against these things, there is no law. So just like with Christ, on this, on, I'm using this Palm Sunday to highlight, to underline the, the Spirit leading him, the Spirit guiding him, the Spirit bearing fruit in him, that it could have been any other way. It could have been Christ leading his angel armies down from heaven. But he came and he died for our sins instead. No longer do we have to sacrifice animals for our sin. Jesus took it all. And I think that's so humbling. So at the beginning of this week, as we're leading up into to Good Friday and Easter, let us think about it could have been any other way. But this was the Spirit's way. The Spirit bore fruit in Jesus, guided him to this conclusion. And if we let the Spirit guide us, who else could be saved? Who out there that is lost and hurting and in need can we serve? I think that's so amazing. So, so keep that in your, in your mind when Friday comes around. It's called Good Friday in the past. I've called it. It's actually the best Friday. Uh, my, this might, I said it a couple times now, but me being an American and my relationship with Good Friday, I don't quite fully understand the dourness that can sometimes come in on Good Friday. Uh, for starters, it's called Good Friday, but the dourness, the, the sadness coming in when the joy is that Jesus willfully did this. He laid down his life. No greater love, the Bible says, than when somebody lays down their life for another. So Jesus laid down his life for us and was resurrected. We know the ending. The, the, I feel like the sadness of Good Friday acts like we didn't read the next chapter in the book. Where really it's the best Friday that has ever happened in the history of the world that Jesus came and took away the, our sin. But I, I'm preaching another message all of a sudden. But really, let's let the Holy Spirit lead us and guide us and bear fruit in us so that we may serve just as Jesus served. Why didn't I pray for us? Father, we thank you so, so much for what you did for us. God, that I, I feel like my imagination could come up with a thousand different ways it could have gone down. But your way was perfect. That your Holy Spirit guided. And the, the fruit that was born up. Jesus had just you saved your people. You saved me. Father, and I am humbled by that. So Father, I open myself up to your spirit. Guide me. Guide us as restore. Guide us as your children. So that we can see the needs of the people out there. Not 
lean on on our own understanding of, oh, I think it should be done this way. That we can lean on your spirit and be led by you. And that if we serve in humility that way, people can be saved. So let's follow your example, Christ. Let's follow your example, Jesus. For you are good. And you are good, Father. And we thank you for it. And all God's people said, amen and amen. Thank you so much for stopping out, guys. Please stay tuned for next week. It is Easter. It's the big weekend itself. You do not want to miss it. Ian's going to be coming along and sharing a quick message with you. But until then, we'll see you next time. Bye, guys.